Hi guys, it's Michaela Lysak. Welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back to my YouTube channel. We need to go over a few updates because Michaela has been gone for a month. So update number one. I've been super busy with school and auditions. Literally, like I've been having so many auditions. What the gosh. Update number two, Instagram DMs. Y'all already know that if you have any questions you wanna ask me, you can DM me on Instagram and I will respond. But I had to make a little bit of change. I have been growing on YouTube and on my Instagram. I am at 30,000 on here. And on Instagram, I'm getting closer to reaching 10K. So with that, I've been getting a flood of messages on my DMs. As of now, I will only be responding to people who follow me back on Instagram. I used to not, I used to just respond to every DM that came in, but I have to start making time and prioritizing my followers. I'm giving you guys free advice. I help people with their specific problems. And so if you're not following me, I just feel like that's not fair and you're kind of taking advantage of professional advice um, and you know I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart I feel like it's the least that you guys could do so if you want to DM me on Instagram be sure to follow me and then I will respond to you those are the requirements also one question per person guys I get so many people trying to you know be like oh wait I have another one and another one and here's a list of questions one question per person and just start off with your question don't be like hey can you help me just give me your question first or else I just delete it um, we really don't got time for that. Update number three, some giveaways. Now, listen up. When I hit 50K on YouTube and also when I hit 10K on Instagram. So I'll be doing an Instagram giveaway and a YouTube giveaway when I hit those follow counts. So be sure to share this video or share my channel with any of your friends. You guys can win some really cool prizes. I would love to give back to you guys because I love you. Yeah, those are all of the updates and let's get into the video. So today we are going to be talking about headshots. What is a headshot? A headshot is pretty self-explanatory. It's a photo or a portrait of somebody's head or face. It's usually coupled with a resume and your resume would be stapled on the back of your headshot. I have a video on how to create your very own resume right here so you can check it out if you need to know how to create your own resume for your headshot. The combination of an actor's headshot and resume is basically the actor's calling card. It's used by agents and managers to submit their clients for auditions. And your headshot and your resume is something that you have to take with you to every audition. You should always have it, even if it's not required, always take it just in case. It's super important to take your headshot seriously. So finding a good photographer is the first step in the headshot process. I'm going to repeat it. Do not take your own headshots. Do not take your own headshots. You gotta find somebody who specializes in headshots. Headshots last a long time, so it's important to really invest in these. These photos are what your agent and your manager are going to send to casting when they submit you for roles. So casting directors and all these important people are gonna see your face, you want it to be a quality photo. You need to make a good first impression. We actually have a story for you to make this a little more interesting. We have a little story, you guys. So I actually had somebody reach out to me over DM asking if they had an adequate headshot. And I asked for permission to showcase our DM conversation. YKTV.Rika said, Hi Michaela, I wanted to know if this was a good headshot. I took a picture, but I thought it would be a good idea to turn it into a headshot. So I need your opinion. This was her headshot. She's so beautiful, but I do feel like this is probably not the best choice. I saw a lot of shadows on her face. You shouldn't have anything too distracting on your head to take away from your face. And this red bandana is really, um, really there. So I said, in my opinion, this is not a very good headshot. It does not look professionally taken. And then I sent her a photo of my headshot. This is a photo of my current headshot. I hope you can see the difference. I heard you can take headshots on an iPhone. So I wanted to try that because I found a place for headshots and it's $200. I wanna do one for free first which is totally understandable. I totally get that um, because headshots are a big, big investment. They are expensive. If you really don't have the means to get a professional photographer, work with what you got. You can take your own photo. If you have the means to get a professional headshot photographer, do that. But if you really can't, try and get somebody to take a photo for you. 
So with finding a photographer, if you have a representation like an agent or manager, usually they will recommend some of their favorite photographers and you can ask them for referrals. They send you out for auditions, so it's smart to listen to them and figure out who they like. You can also look on Instagram for tagged posts to find photographers. You can go to their account and then DM them about an inquiry for pricing or what their process is. You should also look at photographers that shoot your ethnicity very well. Some photographers just know how to light deeper complexions or lighter complexions. So find a photographer maybe on Instagram that you see, oh, they shoot a lot of girls or guys that look just like me. I think that this would be really good because I love their photos. Just to help you guys out, two of my favorite headshot photographers are Michael D'Ambrosia and Kenneth Dolan. I love their work um, and I've always been satisfied with their headshots. Once you've found a photographer and set up your appointment, it is time to move on to the next step, which is planning. Oh, what to wear for headshots. For your headshot, you need to look like how you would present yourself in an audition. So note that the photo representing you is for casting to see and so if you walk into the audition room looking completely different, then there's gonna be a problem. Let's start off with hair. For hair, I would suggest making a collection on Pinterest, figuring out what hairstyles you think look really good, um, what you like on you and what you would wear to an audition. Don't do anything that will hide your facial features. You wanna keep your hair out of your face. So nothing like this for a headshot. It would be more like this for a headshot. You want them to see your face. Makeup. Keep the makeup minimal, nothing too crazy. If anything, start off light and then build up as you go throughout the shoot. Usually getting a makeup artist is super helpful. They have makeup specific for photography. Your everyday wear makeup might not suit photos. Clothes. Look at other headshots for your ethnicity to see what looks good on your skin type. Nothing too distracting. No chunky jewelry like big earrings or huge necklaces. I filmed the video. Wait, are you recording right now? Am I gonna be in the video? Sure. Can. Hi. Okay, I got to go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I love you, subscribers. Uh, oh, what is it? Oh yeah, like and hit the post notification bell and subscribe. Sorry. Okay, all right, bye. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about clothes. So nothing that can distract from your face. Choose clothes that fit personalities. So you can do edgy, sexy, shy, or innocent, but don't dress as characters, because I've seen that. So for example, like the nerdy glasses and bow tie thingy. If anything, just, you know, wear a collared shirt and a plaid vest. It doesn't need to go so far as fulfilling the whole suspenders and bow tie. We don't need that. And a tip would be to prepare all of these things ahead of time. You go shopping, get all these clothes, really plan out all of the outfits you're going to bring to the shoot. Soon you will be on your way to the photo shoot. What to expect at a photo shoot for headshots? On your headshot day, get prepared. Pack water, oil blotting sheets, deodorant, a toothbrush, all of that jazz. Ladies, you should bring different bra options. If you have a tank top and you don't want your bra strap to show, you know, bring a bandeau, different types of bras. Maybe one will see through your shirt, so just be prepared for that. Make sure your clothes are ironed and ready to go. Bring your own makeup, even if you have a makeup artist that's going to be there, you never know there could be an emergency, so be prepared. Also be prepared with a payment method and also prep your hair the night before, get it ready, bring your hair stuff, do all of that. When you get there, meet the photographer, they will walk you through their plan. If you don't have a makeup artist, come to the shoot with your hair and makeup already done. The photographer will help you choose a selection from the different outfits that you brought, and then you're going to change and get ready to shoot. When posing, the photographer will direct you, so don't be nervous, just relax. A good photographer will be able to direct you to the perfect pose, all while making you feel completely comfortable. You will probably review some of the photos and then pay if you haven't already. And then after that, it's time to pick your headshots. Picking your headshots. This is something very important and it should take a lot of time. You have to narrow down thousands of photos to only a few select options. It's usually best to choose no more than eight photos, like eight or 10 of your favorites. And then you have to narrow it down to like two for printing. Um, for casting sites, I would recommend like no more than eight that you would get featured. Um, so really narrowing it down to like eight of the ones that you want on casting sites and for your agent and your manager to have 
um, for you and then two that you choose as your main dramatic and comedic and those are the ones that you get print out at photo labs so if you have representation ask them to choose their favorite photos in your photo gallery even if you feel their choice isn't best it's usually good to choose a photo much like the one that they selected or even the one that they selected because they are the ones sending you out they know you know what photo is going to sell you to casting choose photos that show your range where you can be edgy, you could also be in a comedy, but you could also be in a drama. You want them to see this range of you as an actor. You can also get your photos retouched. If you have any blemishes or if you have like a hair that is just, you know, in a weird spot in the photo, you can always get them taken out. You just have to find a retouching service on the internet. I will try to find some and I'll link them in the description. Headshot printing services. Choose two headshots that you want for printing one comedic and one theatrical. I will link some headshot printing services in the description below for you guys, just so you have some uh, sources that you can go to. You can ask the service to add a border for your name. Do not print your headshots on paper at home. You need to get them printed from a photo lab on this like special, I don't know, headshot paper. Let me get one of my headshots. Ah, let's see, let's see. This is an old one um, I got from Michael D'Ambrosia. Oh, okay, let's do this one. This is a packet of all of my prints. So I just have a bunch of uh, headshots in here. It's from the actor's photo lab. This is just one of the prints that I had. And um, you can kind of tell it's on like this shiny reflective paper. I also told the photo lab to add my name right at the bottom so that, you know, when they're looking at it, they don't have to flip to the back to see um, my name. This is my comedic headshot. You can see my face was definitely a little bit chubbier. That is it for this headshot journey video. Please like this video so more people find this video and they can get this advice. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because I do respond to any questions you guys have I answer. It is that time of the video. Everybody knows that time of the video. It is time to react to a monologue submission, the fun part of the video. If you guys want some critiques on your own acting, head over to my Instagram. Y'all already know the deal. My page, click on the monologue highlight on my page and you will see all of the information on how to submit your very own monologue. Who do we have this week? Who do I got? Our monologue this week is from Ki... Kinia? Kinia? Kaniane, 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 from Kaniane Dykes. Her Instagram is at Kaniane. Go follow her and tell her she's really brave for submitting her monologue. Let's go. Let me find the video first, though. Are you Marianna and Callie? I am so sorry. Shit! Oh, I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm trying to be better about saying I'm sorry too much, which is really hard because apologizing is a big thing in my family. So I regret that I'm late. Anyway, it's very nice to meet both of you. We're low on toilet paper. I thought free toilet paper would be a nice perk, but I had no idea how much people really use. So I'm sorry. I regret that after this runs out, you're gonna have to buy your own. Now, let me show you your room. Now, I know that Ed said that you would have your own bathroom, but the guy before you was growing psychedelic mushrooms in there, which caused a bit of a mold problem. So, we evicted him and turned it into a closet. <laughs> now, we can take a little bit off your rent and you can buy a chamber pot on Amazon if you don't want to pad down the hall all night. But I wouldn't poop in it because we have a bit of a mice problem and they might try to eat it. Depending on your diet, of course. Okay. Thank you so much for submitting. Um, I'm going to be a little more harsh on you just because you are an adult. And when you're older, people in the business usually don't have as much sympathy for you. They expect you to, you know, be well-trained and experienced. So um, I'm, I'm gonna be, 
you know, a little blunt. You're signed with an agency from what you put on your slate, which is great. First off, don't put a slate in a title card for self-tapes. Um, this is fine for my channel just because it's my YouTube channel. This isn't a professional audition, but you know, you should just know this if you have an agent. You should also know never to look at the camera. You should always play to the sides of the camera unless you are specifically directed by casting to do so. With your performance, I could tell you were looking at like a viewfinder or something. Like you were like looking at yourself um, like in the camera. That's what it looked like. Even if you weren't, you still gotta change your eyeline because that is what it looks like. Plus this angle is just very uncomfortable we are like above you and you're below us and you're kind of looking up. Here's an example of one of my recent self tapes that I just did. Um, you can see my framing, you can see my lighting and I, you can see my eye lines. I'm not looking up and I'm not looking like I look in the viewfinder. I'm really just looking off to the side. Um, so you can see that in my recent self tape. Why is it so loud guys? Can't they just make like silent leaf blowers or something? Oh my, oh my gosh. So now let's go into some character notes. This whole thing feels very unnatural. This doesn't seem like how a person would actually talk or behave. I can tell, yes, that the character is supposed to be very weird, um, a little bit socially awkward, uh, people pleasy. Um, but there's a way that you can play it where it's balanced and I don't think that that is achieved in this. I can see that she's socially awkward because she's trying to remember these social etiquettes that, you know, maybe her parents taught her like, oh, wait, uh, it's, it's rude to say that way, let me rephrase this. Uh, you know, she goes into that whole thing. But it, it's just so over-exaggerated. There can be a middle ground, so I, I would just say tone it down, you know, just a little bit. I'm so sorry. Shit! Oh, I mean, I'm not sorry. I don't see any natural transitions. So for example, when you curse, you know, it's like you didn't register what you had said before. It, it just seemed uh, so sudden. It's like you were just spewing out your next line and your next emotion and instead of us seeing, you know, your thought process and your transition. Just your lines aren't flowing organically. They're very, you know, stiff and there's so much emphasis on like every word. You know, emphasis is, impor is important, but when it's overdone, it just loses its effect. I'm trying to be better about saying I'm sorry too much which is really hard because apologizing is a big thing in my family. Yeah, take for example this line where you say, which is really hard. You really need to work on subduing your performance. Taking a step back to learn more of the technical aspects of acting. You really need to work on your transitions and making your acting a lot more natural. I do like the energy that you provided. The energy was great. That was really good. You're really good on energy, but you just gotta tone it down. But that's just my opinion. You do what you want with it. What did you guys think of her monologue? Leave me a comment down below telling me what you guys thought, if you disagreed with me, or if you think she did amazing. I would love to hear it. Um, these are just all my opinions, you know what I mean? You send me your monologue, you want my critique, I'll give you my critique. I was just a little bit harsh because she is older. The business really isn't um, forgiving. You're not it, they're just gonna next, you know what I mean? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some really good information. Be sure to subscribe so you can see other helpful acting videos. Be sure to do it for the giveaway. You can win something for free, okay? Coming soon though, coming soon. Like this video so more people find this video and my channel can grow. I really love your guys' support. It means so much because I'm giving this free advice to you guys, hoping that it will do some good. Anyway, that's it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.